play some of the photos that are, that's in my presentation. Now, none of you got down to the Underground River, though, did you? No. And even though the Underground River is there, and we don't get to see it on tours, we see the evidence of that water. That's why my title, A Watermark of Nature, is we see the evidence of the water. Can you folks in the back hear me? Great. This is microphone. If I talk like this, it works really well, but that's kind of uncomfortable. So I'll see if it works. All right. If you've been on a historic tour of Mammoth Passage or just walked down, you might have seen this sign. It is near the historic entrance. We'll do a block for you. This is the Green River. It's less than a half a mile down the hill from the entrance. And on a nice summer day, you might see a smattering of colors dotting the river. People paddling canoes or kayaks. They like to see the park from the canoes. It doesn't feel inviting tonight, though, does it? <laughs> so we'll think summer. Think summer. Maybe we'll hear the shrieks of people playing in that cold water. Or maybe you'll even see someone sitting on the side of the river casting his line, you know, for catching a fish or two. Water is the common denominator in all of these scenarios, as it is the common <coughs> denominator in the story of Mammoth Cave. When Mammoth Cave was established, it was to protect the unique or unusual geologic features and the life within. But without water, we wouldn't even have the geology that supports the life here in the cave. So water. It's necessary for survival. We drink it. We play in it. Once a week, we bathe in it. <laughs> Seems pretty harmless. Yet water has the power to create, to sculpt, to decorate, and even has the power to destroy. None of you saw that waterfall today. It's on its way down to the historic entrance, but it, you can only see it when you're standing in the rain. The water has the power to create. The rocks themselves in the area, limestone, sandstone, and shale formed underwater. So first we'll talk about the limestone. A long, long, long time ago, all the continents were joined together and the big continent called Pangaea, and all that weight was pushing down. And so some of the continents were partially underwater, kind of like an iceberg. The lowlands were underwater. But unlike an iceberg, icebergs in cold water, North America was under a warm, shallow sea in some places. And in this warm, shallow sea, there was life. Mostly coral, but there was other things like brachiopods and gastropods and crinoids and sharks and their hard body parts settled to the bottom of the floor when they died and because bones and hard body parts are made out of calcium. The limestone's calcium carbonate. We know this happened because we see evidence in the cave. Does anybody see these? Yeah, very good, very observant. You can see these on a Grand Avenue tour, new entrance tour, Quad Cave tour if you're looking, or if you're going in the right areas. Corn Coral. You can see these, Grand Avenue, new entrance tour, Wild Cave tour, introduction to caving. How many did Wild Cave or introduction to caving? All right. Yeah, good. <laughs> How many on the new entrance saw the horn coral? All right. Colonial coral. 
Carl. This is obviously seen on your steps down in the new entrance door in the rock wall. Anybody notice the colonial coral? It was there. So next time you come back and do a tour, you know what to look for, won't you? Okay, then we have sandstone and shale. And this formed after we were to see the continents split apart and we rose up a little bit, and then we were at the mouth of a big old river that doesn't exist anymore. Michigan River. Do we have any folks from Michigan today? All right. We always have to have at least one. Great. Now you made my night complete. Michigan River. And at the end, it's just like Mississippi today, at the end of the Mississippi River, what do we have? The River Delta, and it's dumping sand and silt. And that sandstone, I mean, sand and silt got compressed and made the sandstone and shale that's important to Mammoth Cave. So we are here. Can you see my little dot? <laughs> All right. So the rocks formed. Everything was in place. Things changed. And then the cave started to form. We have rain. Comes down. Rain is H2O, mixes with carbon dioxide, CO2, becomes carbonic acid. Sounds pretty scary, doesn't it? And it travels down the cracks in the rocks and dissolves it out as we go. And we got cave passages. Well, yeah, there's my carbonic acid of choice. <laughs> Some of you meant prefer Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper. Yeah, Sprite. Mountain Dew. Most young people like Mountain Dew, all that caffeine, yes. Like, you need more energy. <laughs> the stuff we drink in a can is much more powerful of an acid than what made the cave. It is. It is, yeah. So, if you drink a lot of soda, you don't brush your teeth, your teeth are calcium, what do you get? Cavities, yes. <laughs> Cavities. All right, so this is a little cartoon. It shows you kind of what Mammoth Cave Park looks like. We've got ridges and valleys that what surface water did, sinkholes there. Have you heard your guy talk about sinkholes? Sinking streams. That water dissolves out the limestone underneath passages. Some are big enough to stand in. Some are big enough to crawl in. And way down there, that's your underground river. So it's kind of like Mammoth Cave. Water has the power to carve out passages. And we get amazing things like, yeah, New York subway, horizontal passages. Anything you walk through today was a horizontal passage that's carved out by that carbonic acid. Tall, sinuous passages. Did any grand down here folks today? Yeah, we might have seen this. Fabulous. Water flowing so fast, it just cut down really fast and made these great passages. Smooth curved passages. I love this one on my Grand Avenue tour. Vertical passages. So water dips down and creating these vertical passages on its way down, carving out the rock. Anyone cross bottom of the foot today? Yeah, did you see that? You see the bridge up there at the top? So I was down there looking up. Pretty cool. New entrance store. Silo pit called that because it's so almost perfectly round. It looks like a silo. Roosevelt Dome. So I'm saying that that looks like the profile of Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> And that's why they named it Roosevelt Dome. <laughs> All right, moving water carved out the passages, and then water changes and decorates, sculpts out the passages. Has the power to sculpt. And we get things like this, rills. So after the passage form, water would flood in and then trickle down the sides and edge out those great features there. Pendants. So one water meanders and forms what they call anastomoses, and the bottom layer 
is gone, leaving these the top layer and just those little mouse holes that you see in the cave and wonder, where does that go? Scallops. As the water is going through, little eddies form and scour out the sides. And just like sand dunes, scallops tell us which direction the water was flowing. But scallops also tell us how fast the water was flowing. Now you can see scallops in Batman's Misery if you're not too busy trying to find your way through it. <laughs> Here's some more scallops. These are a lot smaller than the ones I just showed you. So this water was moving a lot faster. Great curved, beautiful, flowing rock formed by water dripping down and traveling down and dissolving it out. So here's a person for a scale. These, if you've ever sat in your car in the rain and watched the raindrops go this way and that way on the windshield, if you've seen that, you can imagine how this formed. The water droplets just trickling down, etching out the rock as it went. These, condensation, little droplets. So if you saw it above bottomless pit or any of the pits there on your new entrance or grand avenue tour, even on Wild Cave Tour, you can see these. I think you guys saw some similar to this. Sometimes you can have the evidence of past water in the presence of current water, but you're too busy to notice. <laughs> This is on an introduction to caving tour. That's called the keyhole, by the way. All right, so we have the sandstone and shale. Why do we care about the sandstone and shale? This was a kitty cat. All right, out the back, there's a kitty cat running across. All right, so you see this, this cartoon. These are sandstone and shale over Mammoth, Mammoth Cave. And we got rainwater. And rainwater comes down, and the sandstone and shale push the water away and it protects the limestone underneath and where the sandstone and shale is not in place then the water comes down and creates vertical passages and cave and waterfalls and other things. So the sandstone and shale acts like a roof over a mammoth cave, so wherever that's in place. And that's why Mammoth Cave is the longest known cave system in the world. Because if you had a leaky roof and you didn't fix it, what would you have? Yeah, it would collapse in. <coughs> so without that sandstone and shale, we'd be a lot of short cakes. But that sandstone and shale allows us to get big dry passages. Anyone see this? The rotunda room on the historic ride. Huge. Half an acre long. This is also on the historic tour. We know this would happen. I mean, this is true, that the sandstone and shale protect us, because this is a man-made shaft. They drilled right through that sandstone and shale, and now it drips all year round, even though it's right in a dry passage. So moving water modifies the looks of the passages, but the cave environment determines what, the, what speleothems are going to grow in there. So water has the power to decorate. Well, what's a speleothem? It just means it's a Latin word for cave deposit. And we have different kinds of cave deposits. We have some in dry caves. Maraboite, beautiful crystal that grows. It's sometimes seen on the Grand Avenue Snowball Tour and by the Wild Cave Tour, but usually late winter and early spring. Once people start coming through, these kind of dissolve away. Tonight. You see them on the Violet City Lantern Tour sometimes, sometimes in the Grand Avenue on Cleveland Avenue. The only true way to tell the difference between Epsonite and Mirabolite is to taste it. The Mirabolite tastes salty. The Epsonite tastes bitter. But be careful what you're tasting because Epsonite, another name for Epsonite is Epsom salt. It, it, yes. You'll be wanting to be close to a bathroom after that. <laughs> and gypsum, calcium sulfate, forms many different shapes and, and crystals and just absolutely beautiful. 
flowering gypsum. If you were on Grand Avenue, Snowball, um, Wild Cave, Introduction to Caving, you might have seen some really incredible flowering gypsum. They only grow in dry cave passages because if you've ever gone swimming at the beach and then laid out on your towel and dried out, what, what do you have on your skin? Salt, salt crystals because the water evaporated. And that's how dry cave gets beautiful crystals. It's an evaporate and it grows on the cave walls. Okay, there's a helmet for scales over somebody's head. In wet cave, we have different kinds of formations. Calcite. Calcite has many names. Travertine, cave onyx, uh, limestone. It's just redeposited chemical limestone and forms by saturated, supersaturated water dissolving this mineral and making these great formations. If you look in the water droplet in the tip of a soda straw, you can actually see crystals growing in it. It's pretty awesome. These are formed by dripping water. Yeah. Super saturated. If you've ever tried to put enough sugar in your iced tea so it's really sweet and you notice it doesn't dissolve anymore, it deposits at the bottom, your iced tea is super saturated with sugar. Also, anybody ever make sugar rock candy? <laughs> Eating it, it tastes pretty good too, yeah. And you get that water super saturated with your sugar and crystals grow. And that's kind of how calcite formations in the cave grow. So we get things like soda straws and cave bacon, water flowing in ribbons along the cave ceiling. The frozen Niagara is this big sheet of flowstone after flowstone. Bridal altar, if you've been on the Star Chamber tour, you get to see the bridal altar. Huge, huge formations. This is twice as tall as I am. Water is essential for life in the cave. Without water, we might not see frogs or fish or crawfish or salamanders or maybe not even bats. So the water flows through the cave, it comes out in springs like the River Styx spring here, and it flows out and joins the Green River. The Green River is the water table here. I should say normally it flows out and joins the Green River. Sometimes, though, the Green River flows into the cave. Like May of 2010, anybody go on a historic tour? Do you recognize River Hall? Those wooden, whoops, wooden planks, those were the benches. That's why there's now aluminum benches in there. They popped off and floated away. <laughs> there, I noticed that there was a gauge in that hall. That yes. For when it floods? The gauge is for when it floods. So in the spring of 2010, the water was 49 and a half feet above normal water level. Yeah. Pretty exciting. And so this was the last day anybody could make it to that side of the room. This is where you come down into River Hall, and then these were the steps that go up out of River Hall on your historic tour. Who would have thought a little drop of water would be so powerful? Water has the power to destroy. If you remember my little cartoon, you see water came down, and right here, where there's a hole in that roof, it collapsed in. Here's a blow up of that. And here's a true life example of water coming in and had it collapsed in. Anybody recognize this? Yeah? Yeah? Here's another view of it. So this passage used to continue on beyond the rubble and rocks that the stairs are now housed on. But fear not, because the end of one thing is a new beginning, and so we had a new entrance to Mammoth Cave thousands and thousands of years ago. That's 
interested in my presentation, I'll be happy to answer any questions. You guys, I don't want to keep you cold. You're welcome to come by the fire left. <laughs> a little bit. All right. Oh. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful stay here. Enjoy.